Welcome back to uh, an early morning, uh, chapter 20 of the boy at the back of the class. The Cold Stream Guards. When my brain woke up again and I opened my eyes, I was lying on something soft and could see a blur of flashing blue lights and lots of police cars everywhere. Right, let's get her in the ambulance, said a voice. Tom was standing next to where my feet were. He was crying and saying, friend, a lot to London to a London police officer, but standing behind him were two of the Queen's special guards. Forgetting that I had been frightened, I sat up and cried out, please, and realising the note was still in my hand, but all scrunched up now, I held it out to them, please, you have to give this to the Queen, I said. The London police officer who had been talking to Tom walked up to me. Now, you just calm down and take it easy. You did a dangerous thing today. These are trained combat officers, he said, pointing at the Queen's special guards. They're trained to stop anyone attempting to hurt the Queen. But, but we didn't want to hurt the Queen, said Tom, his face red. We know that now, son, but we can't be too careful, can we, said the officer, his voice not as strict as it was before. One of the Queen's special guards came over to me. Let's have a look at this note then, shall we? He said gently, holding out his hand. I handed it to him and watched his face as he read it. Some people won't tell you what they're thinking, so you have to watch their face extra hard to see if they give any clues away. I didn't expect a special guard to do anything with his face, especially not one who worked for the Queen. But this one chuckled and then handed it over to the other special guard standing next to him. He had more medals on his chest. He smiled too. I don't know why, because it wasn't meant to be funny. This is what the note said. Dear Your Highness Majesty Queen of England, We wrote you a letter on Friday about Ahmet, our friend who's a refugee boy, and put three stamps on it so that the Royal Mail will get it to you faster. We've come to see you today because it's Wednesday already and we thought the Royal Mail might have lost the letter and as the gates are closing on Friday it means we haven't got much time to find Ahmet's family and bring them here so that they can all live together. We're outside the gates now. Tom's got brown hair and I've got dark brown hair and we're in our school uniforms which are dark blue and grey with pictures of a ship and a book on it so that you can see us easily. We can't stay later than half past one because if we don't get home at home time then our mum's and Tom's dad and Josie's and Michael's will all worry. Please let us come and see you as soon as you finish your breakfast. Yours sincerely, me and Tom. P.S. We've got extra tea bags for tea. Hoping to have tea with the Queen there, were you? Asked the second special guard as he shook his head. Here, take a look at this, he said, passing the note to a police officer who was standing opposite. She read it and said, Well, you don't see notes like this every day. A, paramer a paramedic woman in a dark green onesie looked at the note too. Oh, sweet, she said. Then she made me lie down again and she started pushing the bed onto an ambulance. But I don't want to go to hospital, please. No, I shouted, starting to feel scared. I don't like hospitals. The last time I saw dad was when he was in a hospital and made me promise to, and I made a promise to myself that I would never see one again, not ever. Don't worry. We won't take you to a hospital unless we need to, darling. But I do need to check you're okay and that you don't have a concussion, she said the paramedic calmly. She had long black hair that was tied into a ponytail and large brown eyes and an upside down watch on her chest. Just lie here quietly f for me for a few minutes and we'll have you out and about in no time, she added, giving me a wink. The wink in her nice voice made me feel a little better, so I did what she said. After she pushed me onto the ambulance, the paramedic told me her name was Davinda and asked me all sorts of things, like how I was feeling and if I had a headache and who Armit was and about my mum and dad. I told her about my dad and she said she was sorry. She held my wrist and checked my pulse and put a thermometer in my mouth and then said, I just need to check your heartbeat. But when she pulled up my school jumper, she stopped. Nice top, she said, her mouth suddenly looking as if it were tickling her. I looked down at myself and suddenly remembered that we'd put on our best outfits for the Queen. It's my best top, I said, touching the shirt dotted with sparkling silver stars and golden planets. 
But when we saw the Queen, I explained. Ah, grinned paramedic Davinda as she opened the three top buttons and put a cold silver desk, disc on my chest. Now, take a deep breath in and out. After listening for a moment, she nodded and said, You look and sound absolutely fine to me. Ready to go? I nodded. So she helped me down from the bed and held my hand as I got off the ambulance. In the distance, I could hear people cheering, but I didn't know why. Now, I think it's time for you two to get on home. Officer Martina is going to take you both home in that special car over there, said paramedic Davinda. She pointed to the London police officer who was standing next to Tom and the two special guards. Behind her was a police car with flashing blue lights on top of it. Really? asked Tom, his eyes lighting up. I was excited too, but then I remembered the note. But what about the Queen and the note? I cried, looking up at everyone. If we don't give the, to the Queen, then she won't know that we came and she won't know about Armit. Officer Martina smiled. I think she'll know you came all right, she said. The special guard wearing the most medals walked over to me and bent down so that his face was at the same level as mine. He had bright blue eyes and enlarged dimples in his cheek, just like Dad used to have, only Dad had them in both cheeks, not just one. Her Majesty isn't here today, he said. She's actually in her other castle in Windsor. The Queen's got another castle, asked Tom, looking horrified. Don't worry. I'll make sure she knows you are both here and that she gets this. The special guard held up the note. All right? Promise, I asked, suddenly feeling happy again. Like, really, really promise? You have my word, he nodded. And a cold stream guard never breaks their word. What's a cold stream guard? I asked, immediately imagining lots of them diving into freezing cold streams with their hats on. A cold stream guard is what we are, he replied, standing back up straight. I'm Lieutenant Chris Taylor, and standing next to your friend over there, your Tom over there, is Second Lieutenant Walter Kungu. I looked over at the other guard, who is now giving us a salute. We're part of a very special force that protects both the Queen's houses and the country. Can you give her our presents too then? asked Tom. Presents? asked Officer Martina. Yeah, we got them for the Queen, explained Tom, pulling out the half-eaten packet of biscuits, the ruler, the packet of football stickers and the squashed box of fudge from my rucksack. I'm afraid we can't take those, grinned Lieutenant Kungu, but we'll let her know about them when we give Her Majesty your note. Oh, OK, Tom shrugged, stuffing everything back into my bag. Now, kids, time to get you home, said Officer Martina. We've spoken to your school and your parents have, and have told them what happened. Oh, no, said Tom, twisting his hands. We're going to be in so much trouble. I nodded miserably. Don't worry, said paramedic Davinda. I'm sure they'll be happy just to have you back home and safe. And I think, she added, looking up at the helicopters that were flying overhead, you might even be a little bit famous. Tom frowned at me and I frowned back because we were both wondering what could have made us famous. You two have a safe journey now, said Lieutenant Taylor. And the next time you want to send the Queen a message, don't go running after any of our soldiers, said Lieutenant Kungu. A letter is more than enough. And giving Tom and me a nod and a salute, the Queen's special cold stream guards, who were now extra, extra special to both Tom and me, marched off back towards the palace, carrying the Queen's note. Right, young troopers, in you go, said Officer Martina, as a silver car with bright yellow and blue squares on its doors and a huge siren on, on the top stopped in front of us. Passing me a piece of a piece of folded paper, Paramer paramedic Davinda said, that's a special note for your mum, to let her know you're completely fine, so make sure you give it to her, okay? I nodded. Bye then, smiled Paramer paramedic Davinda as she began to wave. You both take care of yourselves now. 
Getting into the back seat of the police car, we waved back. Lots of people had also begun cheering and waving at us from all along the palace walls, so we waved back at them too, even though we didn't really know why. Tom got out a biscuit and started eating it. I took one too, but even though I was hungry, I couldn't eat it. My stomach felt all jumpy and twisty inside, and the closer we got to home, the more jumpy and twisty it became. There are some journeys you can never enjoy, no matter how exciting they are. Not even when you're in a real police car, because at the end of it, you know you'll be getting at least a hundred detentions and probably won't be allowed any pocket money or chocolate for 10 years. But it was okay, because even not being able to have any chocolate ever again would be worth it if the Queen could help Ahmet find his mum and dad. That was all that really mattered.